Shout out to Big Screen B, y'all. But today, people want to talk and don't want to be judged. I want you to judge everything I say. I want you to judge everything I say. I want you to judge everything I say. What's going on, y'all, Nick? Oh, coming to you with another video. So, you guys, <laughs> you're going to enjoy this video. I titled it a lesson on jury versus witness again a lesson on jury versus witness now why am i making this video i'm making this video because shabbat evening um october 4th i believe pastor Dow um brought you all to the university of the painful heresy <laughs> the university of the painful false doctrine that's what you guys attended that day. And in the process of him bringing you to that painful university, right, which was so oppressive to the saints, um, he begins to bring forth a testimony by Brother Horace, all right? So I want you to watch this first piece of evidence that we have presented today, and hopefully we can learn something, all right? Let's check this out. Just like Brother Randy, he, he just left. You ain't never seen them get out there and make no videos blasting all up on straightway for the next three, four, five years. Them either. So <laughs> I stop, um, but, and trust me, I'm not going to keep stopping because I do want this to play out. But just understand, the reason why he's talking about Brother Randy is because he's claiming that when Brother Randy had left, Brother Randy um, did not disparage the name of straightway, which is a complete farce. Um, he has numerous videos on his channel where he's throwing jabs at Strayway. The only problem is he's not a man enough to actually call Strayway by name, but Pastor Rufus done exposed that, so that's enough of that. But the question that we need to ask ourselves is, why is someone like Randy, who was so oppressive to the saints, he was so oppressive to the saints, and Pastor himself mentioned that, hey, Brother Randy, don't you ever come back unless you give me <laughs> the D to your land. Why would he allow someone like Brother Randy to come back? Oh, I know why. Because apparently the enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? <laughs> the only reason why they tag teaming up is because Randy has the same hatred that Pastor Dawa has for Pastor Rufus. But hey, anyway, let's actually proceed. That's the reason why they come back. But those of you that done did that, you can't come back. Uh-uh. <laughs> Uh -uh. Uh, and, and trust me, I have no desire to come back. Let's go. Never. You showed your hand. Wow. Yeah. Watch this. Y'all ready? Bring on Brother Horace. Bring, it out. Bring him up. What just happened, and some word came to my mind when Pastor was speaking about what was going on, and I'm realizing something and it's causing me to to rejoice and i'm gonna say hallelujah because i look deeper into this thing and when pastor talks about the viper you know being among us i instantly thought of in the word where it mentioned something about taking up serpents and of course i always remember luke 10 29 about trampling over serpents and scorpions so i looked so i looked into it and I'm going to share this with you because this is exactly what's going on. This is exact. This is a test of faith, y'all. Look, so look, check this out. I found, so tread in, in, in Luke 10 or, yeah, Luke 10, 19, where it says you tread on, you've given authority to tread on serpents and scorpions. Tread, one of the definitions is to advance by setting foot upon, tread upon, to encounter successfully the greatest perils from the machinations, that's like schemes, and persecutions which Satan would fain thwart the preaching of the gospel. So this is literally something to come. Speaking of, this is something to come to distract you or to, to, she know what she's doing. This to distract you from the, the preaching of the gospel or, or get you off of the path, right? So, um when you when you tread that means you encounter it with success and so i look behind viper too 
So uh, Viper, it's a Viper, offspring of Vipers, addressed to cunning or malignant, wicked men. And it's similar to the uh, serpent definition, which is an artful, malicious person. So a couple verses, Matthew 23, 33. You serpents, you generations of Vipers, how can you escape damnations of hell? And so, and it's the same, it's the same term in, in all of these verses. And we've heard this one before, Mark 16, 17, and 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. See, this is a test of faith. That's why I say it's a test of faith. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it should not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I look behind, take up. It's basically like you you encounter it or you lift it or you're involved with it to some so you you're handling it right uh -oh. kind of like them people who literally did it right who who took up the serpents and nothing happened to them but this is what happened to me i'm this is what i'm telling y'all right now this is literally what happened to me um and of course we got luke uh 10 19 and 20 behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So I rejoice because my name is written in heaven. Um, I literally, this this is what happened to me. I took up a, a serpent, like, and then I'm thinking about past things that happened and I'm realizing I was actually closely involved and <laughs> with a few serpents now, <laughs> to, to, be, to be quite frank and honest, like since the beginning almost. I remember being in, in uh, Brother Jonathan Perez's garage that last time on, on Pentecost when a lot of stuff was flying around me and I was like, this is weird and, and uh, Brother since since left the ministry brother um what was his name brother uh brother zach robinson he was talking about you know and crying talking about confronting pastor about something and i was just like brother if you have a question ask the question i didn't see what the big deal was but this is literally what was happening and me not realizing i was like in the presence of a viper in the presence of a serpent the whole time and then more recently, right? Brother Galen literally sent me four different videos of, you know, that would be things to, to further convince me of his perspective as, as he saw the direction that the, the, the ministry was going. It's, and it's like, I, I looked at, I looked at one of them and then I, the way I reacted was, <coughs> it was the conclusion that he had. And the same thing just happened after Tabernacle. I literally sat in a car with Nick. All right. Uh, all right. So I know that was very long winded, but this is where it gets interesting. All right. So he he stated that three brothers, I guess, brother John to Perez, Zach and Galen. Right. Or you may know him as Zedekiah. Three brothers came up to this man already warning him about the nature and the current state of straightway and he ignored every single one of them <laughs> i mean hey I, maybe the most High was trying to find favor on this guy to show him the truth but this guy ignored all the warning signs all right so now this is where i come in and he said that i was sitting with him in a car which was true but let's keep going and he was sitting here showing me his perspective on everything with the emblem and everything like that and I was sitting here telling him, I was like, uh, brother, let's do this right. Because what you don't what you don't want to do is end up making a decision and then putting yourself in a vulnerable position. Stop so, that. you know. All right. So let's actually tackle this real quick. All right. <laughs> because now what I wish to do is actually show you what I said. And again, y'all, you, you guys will actually be the ones to judge, the public, all right? But this is what you need to understand. At this point in time, 
Um, I'm showing this man the pen. Oh, that's what he's claiming. But he's missing out very key details. All right, so let me actually show you how I actually did it. This was a video that I've done in times past, all right? Or rather, I should say recently, when I was showing you my testimony as to why I'm leaving straightway, all right? Check this out for yourselves, because this is how I actually did it. But again, now that's four people mentioning somewhere along the line that it's a it's tried it, Biden, whatever the case may be, you, you name it. So now, this is where it gets interesting, because the last person that I spoke to he said, you know what? I see the same thing. Matter of fact, I want you guys to see, look at me, you know, in my eye. The last person that I spoke to said, I see the same thing that you see, Nick. So how about we follow the book and go to him because you have a witness now. I told the brother, hey. All right. So do you see that? Do you see how he just says that I just showed him my perspective? That was completely false. I didn't just show him. You guys, y'all could go back to the original. I'm not going to play the original testimony video because it would just take us too much time. But you need to understand, y'all, when I had zoomed up to a particular piece of, the, of that emblem, which was the trident, I always asked the individual, what do you see? And Horace begins to tell me what he sees. And if I don't want to lie on the brother... But the brother definitely knew that it was, it had something to do with something pagan. That's what he told me. And he knew that it had something to do with the water and all this other stuff, right? Which, as we did in times past, we already just explained that it was a trident, right? But he says, I see what you see. That's what we need to understand. He said, I see what you see. This is all going to be in point, you guys, when we start breaking down the difference between a jury and a witness, <laughs> all right? It, it, that's very key. So check this out. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I don't see that anything I say to this man, Pastor Dow, is going to change his opinion. But I told him, you know what? For the sake of me loving you and for the peace of your conscience, I'm going to follow the book just like you said. And I'm glad. So just as I said, we went to speak to Pastor together. Now understand why I'm showing you this video because this man will lead you to believe that I just gave you gave him my opinion on the emblem. No, he agreed. And once he went or rather I should say he saw it first, then when I zoomed out and showed him where it came from, he had the same level of concern that I had and he said, "I see what you see. How about we do it the right way and adjust past that?" We already covered that. So then what brings us here? Because you're going to you're gonna see the complete ludicrous rhetoric that comes out of Pastor Dow's mouth. So let's check out what Pastor Dow has to say um, concerning Brother Horace's um, testimony. Check this out. Now, I just had a conversation with Nick before all this, right? And when Brother Horace said, we need to do this right, if Nick was going to do it right, if any of y'all going to do it right, what you do is, is you go get a brother, you don't say nothing to him about what anything is about. Then you go to the person of concern. And then you let that person hear it for the first time. And then you let that person hear it for the first time. And then you let that person hear it for the first time. When both parties are sitting there speaking about it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. You don't get up there and say, I'm try to massage someone over your perspective and point of view. You already done broke scripture. See, these people expect more out of you than they're capable of producing themselves. These are hypocritical mockers, man. <laughs> so now what you start to hear is people in the background, like a bunch of seals, <laughs> clapping. <laughs> what are you clapping for? What are you clapping about? He didn't say nothing. Anyway, let's actually break down what the passage of scripture actually tells you to do. Because you see, these people, such as Pastor Dow, they will present themselves as if they are so knowledgeable and they literally looking at you in your face and deceiving you. That's not what the book says. So let's actually go to the book, all right? So we are in Matthew 18. And we're going to start in verse 15. And let's actually understand what a witness is. Because according to Pastor Dao, 
He claims that a witness is somebody that never heard the situation, never saw the situation, and he's hearing it for the very first time. Uh, no, that's not what a witness is. <laughs> that's not what a witness is. Um, so let's read Matthew 18 verse 15. It says, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Pastor did trespass against me by giving me an idol. All right. That's just, that's just what it is. All right. And I came to him and him alone, just like the book told me to. If he shall hear thee, that has gained thy brother. And this is what's so sad about the situation, y'all. I tried to gain a brother. That's what you need to really understand. This whole thing about all this back and forth with the videos, you need to understand I tried to gain him tried as a brother. I tried to gain a brother. I'm not trying to attack him. I'm trying to show him, just like I said in that video, hey, Pastor, did you do research on this thing? You know, and that's me trying to actually do it in a way where I don't come across too uh, prideful or come across demeaning. I asked him, did you do research on this thing? Just to hopefully it would, you know, spark some curiosity for him to look into it the more so. But he didn't take it as such. Anyway, let's go to verse 16. It says, but if he will not hear thee, this is where it gets interesting, y'all. Then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, this is the key word, y'all, witnesses, every word may be established. So pastor will have you to believe that a witness is someone who has never heard the situation before, and that is completely idiotic. <laughs> it's, just, it is, it's just idiotic, y'all. So let's actually look behind the word witness, all right? So as I'm going down... I don't know if you guys can see my screen. I'm showing you exactly what I'm doing. Now you can see witness come from Greek number 3144. Let's see that. And let's actually go and see what it says, right? A witness. This is important, y'all. Let me zoom in. A witness. You can see witness, martyr, record. All right? One, a witness in a legal sense. All right? I could go further. Uh, in in historical sense, one who is a spectator of anything, example of a contest, all right? Again, even spectators, don't they have to be there to see what's taking place? Okay, now, why am I bringing this up? Because let's actually go into what is a witness from a legal sense. Check this out, y'all. You can see I have on Google, this is the definition of witness. What does it say? A person who who sees an event, typically a crime or accident, take place. <laughs> who sees the event. Who sees the event. Pastor will open up his mouth and say, it's someone who never saw or heard what take place and they're hearing it for the first time. No. No. That's what's called a, a jury. A jury are people within the courtroom that's hearing to both sides for the first time and trying to see come to a conclusion based off hearing it for the first time. Do you see these people? <laughs> they just I'm telling you, they present themselves to know so much truth and they just don't use any common sense. A, again, I'm gonna read it one more time. A witness, a person who sees an event. Typically, a crime or accident take place. Now, let's go back to what I've said in the video. I said I showed him. I did not tell him what I saw first. Notice my testimony is consistent. I, showed, I asked him, what do you see? Upon him telling me what he saw and him seeing the same thing that I saw, I'm just like, okay, so now you are a witness. You see the same exact thing that I see. And his words to me was, Brother, I see what you see. How about we do this the right way and go to Pastor Dow? I have no issue with that. Because think about it, y'all. What sense would it make for me to go to Pastor Dow if he did not see what I saw? So I'm going to just go in the, go to Pastor Dow and say, hey, I got a witness. And the witness is going to say, no, nah, I don't see nothing that Nick is saying. <laughs> what common sense does that have? Of course he has to see what I saw. That's, what, that's the only way he could be a valid witness. Anyway, let's go to a jury. 
All right? Let, let's see. Check this out. A jury, the definition is a body of people, typically 12 in number, sworn to give a verdict in a legal case on the basis of evidence submitted to them in court. You see, that's what pastor wants. And you need to understand why this is actually um, quite demonic, right? The reason why this is demonic is because what pastor wants to do is that if I brought somebody for the first time who never heard anything, then he knows that through the, the, the use of speech and rhetoric, he can sway that person's opinion, which did happen. Because that brother, the following day, started wearing the pin, which according to pastor's word, he was wearing it with pride. <laughs> with pride. Yeah, you're right. That's the only way you could wear that pin, that insignia, whatever you want to call that idol, that dumb idol. But you see what I'm saying? They, they talking about a jury when the Bible is talking about a witness. And I'm going to give you even further proof. Let's check this out, right? Let's look at all the times the word witness has been used um, throughout scripture. All right. So let's actually check this out. All right. So if I scroll down. Notice how it shows you all the time the Greek number 3144 is used, all right? And let's check this out right here, all right? If we go to Acts 6, verse 13, notice what it says here. Let me zoom up. It says, and, and set up a false witnesses, which said, this man seeth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. So time out. So now there's a such thing as false witnesses. So I would like you guys to tell me, what is a false witness? Please chime in. What in the, in the comment section, what is a false witness? Wouldn't a false witness be someone who claims that they did see or hear what took place, but in actuality they didn't? If that's a false witness, then a true witness or just a regular witness would be Somebody that was not there at all. <laughs> hey, that's the logic of Pastor Dow. No, 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 no. If a false witness is somebody who was not actually there to see or hear what took place, that means a true witness or a witness is someone that did see or hear what took place. Not somebody that's hearing it for the very first time, y'all. So this is what I want you guys to understand, right? Because now you're probably wondering, okay, so Nick, why did Horace change his testimony why did he change his stance hey you guys this happens all the time within court this happens all the time all right let me show you guys something if you go to google notice what it says i typed in here how does a jury view a witness who changes testimony let's check this out y'all a jury may view a witness who changes their testimony as someone who is not credible <laughs> all right and then it goes into um, a bunch of other stuff. But guess what, guys? People change their testimony all the time. They change their stance all the time. But if they do, just understand that that actually makes them not credible. Uh, didn't, doesn't the word say a double-minded man is unstable in how many, all, all, all their ways? Yeah. Brother Horace, you're very unstable, my brother. Repent. Just repent. <laughs> Just repent. So, and, and you know what's interesting, y'all? Because you know what's you know what's so interesting. You know who also uh, changes their testimony or change their stance? Oh, 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 oh yeah, Pastor Dow, <laughs> right? This is now I want to say the fourth video, maybe the fourth video, where now I'm addressing to you all that at one point in time he taught. That you shouldn't give your salary to any man. Let's go to that newsletter. All right, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Because you guys already seen it already. But check this out, y'all. This is a newsletter. And I left the link in the description down below. That Pastor Dow, this was his testimony back in 2010, y'all. I'm only going to read the first two sentences. <laughs> That's how fast you can find this information. The church and why it should be in the home. There were pastors, teachers, and elders... But not one man who you gave a salary to. <laughs> Do you guys see what's taking place? They want to take issue with me because 
they are actually the ones that's changing their testimony. Notice within all my video, do you see the level of consistency here? No, Pastor Dow, your testimony is the one that's not credible. How can you say such a thing and yet now you're going to preach, you got to give all. You're telling people to give their entire check. <laughs> but mind you, they're going to deceive you simple ones out there. And they all they're going to do, oh, the, the seal of Hezekiah, which I debunked. Oh, it had wings, which I debunked. They only want to focus on the trident, which I debunked. And guess what? Guess what? You know what's another piece of evidence that also changed over the years? I mean, check this out. This is what they had the nerve to say about the trident back then. This is the video from Tools to Titans. And check out what Pastor Dawa has to say. Y'all listen real close, okay? From Tools to Titans. Hear that? From Tools to Titans. The ancient origins of the fork, trident, and bident. Before these implements were wielded by gods in Greek mythology, the tools were recognized as the fork, trident, and bident had far more humble and practical beginnings long before they took on mythological significance. These tools were used by early civilizations for farming, fishing, and survival. All right, so I'm not going to bore you with this horrible video, but this is what I do want you guys to understand, right? He would have you to believe in this video from Tools to Titans that the trident had humble beginnings as a farming tool, a fishing tool. You guys, <laughs> you know it's so crazy? Because again, going back to what I said, what takes place if a witness changes their testimony? They say that the jury will find such a witness as somebody that's not credible. So you guys, you are the jury. <laughs> you, you the public, you are the jury. You're hearing two sides, my side and Pastor Dow's side. So you judge who have changed. Guess what, you guys? Because as much as he want to claim that it's a farming tool, guess what video I found? <laughs> guess what video I found? Let's bring some more evidence to the courtroom. We have Tabernacles 2023 orientation. Whoa. Let's see what he had to say back then, y'all. Let's see what he had to say back then. This was last year. <laughs> Let's see what he had to say about this insignia back then. Like it works. I was right. Hey, Rob, come around here for a second and, and, and be a model. Either jump up on there, you'll be Zale. <laughs> <Which one? laughs> All right, so this is the, uh, the, the people who pass uh, the security. The security, what do we call it, Frog Man? Yeah. All right, so you see his shirt? You guys got to understand, this is the first time this, in, this symbol is introduced into the assembly. Now, from my understanding, and I don't want to lie because I do not know. At this point in time, I do not believe it was yet an uh, actual carved out idol, to be fair. But understand, this is what this man had said about this symbol back then. Let's go. Goshen. Camp Goshen. Hallelujah. This is the shirts that they're going to be wearing and also the, the security people right here. This is uh, a design that I asked Brother Gideon to do and he made it up because it has something to do with myself, him, and Frogman. All right, so do you see that? He made that symbol to represent himself, Gideon, and Frogman. Now, you got to understand, they all have some form of military background. All right, so when he created this symbol, the components of this symbol has something to do with their background within the military. Let's go. The wings, that has to do with me. And him, and him. They get to, they get to be all over it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then the Ninth Ranger, the Trident Frogman. The Trident Frogman. The Trident Frogman. What? What? The Trident Frogman. Now, for those of you who know, all right, for those of you who know, Frogman, um, if I recall, is a former Navy SEAL. <laughs> it's a former Navy SEAL. He said the trident is frogman. How come he didn't say the fork? How come he didn't say the fork? How come he didn't say the farming tool? 
All of a sudden, it's a fun, so why did his testimony change? Because <laughs> he's not credible, y'all. <laughs> he's not credible. Let's go. Let's see what takes place. Notice what I typed in. What does the trident on the Navy SEAL insignia mean? After all, the frog, um, the, the trident is for, it represented Frogman, who was a former Navy SEAL. So what does that mean, y'all? Check this out. The trident on the Navy SEAL insignia represents Neptune, the Roman god of the sea, and signifies the SEAL's mastery of the ocean. <laughs> Wouldn't that make sense? Navy SEALs, they're always in the ocean. So these pagans use the, the, the symbol of the trident to represent their mastery over the ocean. Because <laughs> he was the god of the sea. <laughs> Man, do you see that, y'all? I'm trying to get y'all to actually think, y'all. Y'all got to think. This man has literally introduced a bunch of paganism within the camp. And then on top of that, now he's trying to bring you to the University of the Painful Heresy. Get that shit out of here, man. Oh, a witness is someone who's hearing things for the first time. <laughs> and you hear the, the, the seals. Anyway, guys, I hope this video was edifying. I don't want it to be too long. I just wanted to give you just some basic understanding. Matter of fact, before I, I head out, let me just prove it to you again using scripture. All right? This using scripture. Check this out. All right? To prove that a witness was somebody that was there. Right? It says, but if he would not hear them, this is verse 16 of Matthew 18, but if he would not hear thee, take with thee one or two more. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, not people who is hearing it for the first time, not a jury, every word may be established. Matthew 18, 17. And if he shall neglect to hear them, hmm, if he, who's the he? Who's the he? Isn't it the brother that trespassed against you from verse 15? That's the he. And if he shall neglect to hear them. How come the them, how come they both saying the same thing? Because they both saw the same thing. They both heard the same thing. That's what a witness is, y'all. <laughs> so if you neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if you neglect to hear the church, the assembly, the ecclesia, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. And that's how I'm treating him now. It, it, because you refuse to listen to not only myself, even outside of Horace, y'all, there's people like Elder Becker and other countless brothers that came up to Pastor Dow concerning this thing, <laughs> and he don't want to hear nobody. And then even now, I could bring it to you guys as the assembly, the church, and he, he don't want to hear that nada. So, hey, you just a heathen Republican. <laughs> hey, hey it, it's unfortunate. I would actually hope that he would repent. That's what I really would hope, but... Hey, I don't know if he has the humility to do that. But yeah, I hope this was an edifying study. <laughs> I hope you guys understand um, to look behind everything. Because after all, that's what Pastor Dow would have wanted you to do back in the day. Look behind me. Do your own due diligence. Practice self-autonomy. That's his words. <laughs> but he lost credibility in that too. Because now his stance is, it, it vexes me when I tell you something and you look behind me. <laughs> and do your own due diligence. Man. Anyway, y'all. With that being said, Nick over and out. The message sent. Jesus is king, y'all.